This tour obviously follows sort of on the heels of the album Declaration, which there was some, you know, question about, do we call this the Declaration Tour? But the song Live Out Loud really captured so much of the essence of what both that album was about, but even more so than the album, it sort of captured the whole essence of not just the music, but the, the stories that we wanted to tell with this tour. Uh, certainly the adoption story, which has been a big part of this tour for me to get for the first time to tell the audience and, and friends of mine who've been listening to my music for years about this new season and chapter of our lives, my family and I, of adopting Shohana. The miracle that has happened to us, uh, our Chapman family, I have to tell you just quickly about, because this is such an amazing, profound thing that's happened in our lives. Started when Emily was about 12 or 13 years old. Emily started talking about wanting a little sister. She had hinted at this over the years and had left notes for Santa, you know, bring me a little sister and a pair of skates, you know, kind of thing. And so we explained to her, you know, that that was not going to happen because I used to tell this really bad, corny little joke in concerts. I'd say, we have three children, eeny, meeny, miny, we plan to have no mo. And I know it's really kind of bad, but <laughs> that was sort of my way of telling these guys, we're, we're kind of done. This is a good number. We're good here. Well, Emily said, no, I really think that I need a little sister. And then, so she came up with this great idea. What about adoption, mom and dad? That's a great idea. Well, see, she knew she was working on us in kind of a tender area because we have been through the years supportive of other families and we've been able to be involved in other families' adoptions and helping support that and working with a wonderful uh, agency, uh, an organization called Bethany Christian Services. I was doing, would do some concerts with them and different things through the years to help support the work they had done. So Emily knew she was kind of working on us there, but we were quick to say, Emily, you know, we're the supportive role in that and we love being a part of that, but you know, we're not going to do that. Well, Emily began to, to write notes to us and leave them on our pillow at night. And I mean, these notes became like letters. She left us on several occasions, two-page letters on our pillow where she would just pour her heart out in these letters and say things like, Mom and Dad, I really want you to pray seriously about this because I believe God has put this on my heart, and if you don't do this, you could be living in disobedience. <laughs> what is that? I'm thinking, you can't flag on the play on that. You can't do that. As, as like the child using that kind of spiritual stuff on the parents, there's got to be some rule being broken there. Um, I mean, that's for us to use, you know, on our children. But anyway, she was so convinced and so serious. So she started to pray about it, which again was so unfair because once she and God got hooked up on this thing, you know, it was, it was sort of over and we just, we're going along trying to tell her why this is not going to make sense. And especially my wife had these fears, great fears and concerns and, and literally would cry herself to sleep some nights as we would kind of talk about it and pray about it and think about it. And she said, what if, what if we're supposed to do this, but I'm afraid I couldn't love a child I didn't give birth to as much as my other children. And that wouldn't be right. And that wouldn't be fair to that child. And you know, she would just get so worried and concerned and God just continued to move us in that direction. And I'm telling you something, young men and young women, if you're old enough to understand the words I'm saying right now, you need to know something. Don't ever underestimate the power of your prayers because they are incredibly powerful and effective before God's throne as we are living testament to that because Emily prayed and little by little, even with these fears and concerns, our, our hearts begin to change to the point where, long story, a little shorter, March of 2000, we found ourselves as a family in Changsha, China, in the Hunan province of China, in this little hotel room. And we're sitting there as a family, all five of us Chapmans looking at each other going, how did we get here? And then we all look at Emily. And then, <laughs> and then we, hear the, we hear voices coming down the hallway. And we hear someone say, they're here. And uh, we walk out in the hallway. And this little six-and-a-half-month-old baby girl is put in our arms. And in that instant, I looked at my wife. And in her eyes, it was a little hard to see because there were a lot of tears and red, puffy, swollen eyes. But I saw a look in her eyes that was miraculous. This look told me that this is our daughter. And she was saying to me, I would give my life for this child. This is my daughter. I don't know how to explain it, but something just happened in that instant. It was literally kind of like the, in that movie, The Grinch, you know, not that my wife is at all like The Grinch, but in just go with me here, you know, in her heart just kind of expanded and, and our whole family's heart, all of us, we just kind of, our hearts grew to take in this incredible miracle that God was doing. And it's just been 
one amazing miracle after another. And I don't tell you that story tonight to simply say, boy, isn't that a nice thing the Chapmans did and pat, pat on the back or anything like that. But I tell you because I've come to understand some incredible things through this experience about God's Word, about the music that I sing even. And you know, so many times throughout the Bible, we read verses that say things like, care for those who are in need, care for the least of these, uh, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those in prison, care for orphans and widows. These kinds of things, I'm beginning to realize God's not checking off his to-do chore list for us on his refrigerator door saying, okay, you did enough good things. I might, you know, let you in heaven or throw a blessing your way. I really believe these kinds of verses in the Bible are incredible invitations. They're invitations from the God who made us, who knows us so well, saying, if you want to know me, if you really want to know what it is to have an alive relationship with the one who made you, then come where I said you'd find me. Come to those who are suffering. Come to those who are the least of these. Go to those places outside of your comfort zone where you're going to have to act in faith and be my hands and my feet to the people I created that I love. And, you know, that's been our experience. It has profoundly affected our lives and so much so that I actually wrote a song about it. And uh, I want to sing this song for you. And as I sing this song, you know, I kind of think of this as Shohanna's song, and that's our daughter's name. And as I sing this song, my, one of the parts I like about it is I get to kind of show you my brag book. I get to show you a video that Shohanna is in, and uh, she's kind of the star of the, of the video. But more than it being Shohanna's song, tonight I really want to encourage you to think about the message of this song as our own story. Each of us here, every one of us in this room who have embraced and better yet, been embraced by the gospel, the love of God, the grace of God. You've entered into a relationship with God. Well, you know what? Our story is this. We were hopeless. We were helpless. We were just like Shohanna in that orphanage. And God came way farther than we went to China. God came through time and space, through eternity, to come and to find you and find me and to take us into his heart and to say, I'll give you a hope and I'll give you a future and I'll give you a name. I'll give you my name and I'll give you my love that not even death can take from you. That's our story. That's why we're here tonight to celebrate. That's what we have to live out loud for. That's what we have to celebrate tonight. And we need to be reminded of it. And then for some of us here tonight, our hope and prayer above all else is that if you've never known the love of God, if you've never been embraced by his love, and you've never allowed his love to take you into his heart, then our prayer is that tonight you would know that God is here, that this may be your adoption day, that he has come for you. This song says, when love takes you in, amazing, miraculous things happen.